The One Ring and its powers are enshrouded in a layer of mystery, and it's one of the most discussed topics in Tolkien's writings. What exactly was its power? Was it merely invisibility, or was there more to it? And why didn't this invisibility affect Sauron when he wore the ring? Hello friends, it's Card here, and today we'll be having a closer look at the power of invisibility of the One Ring. Now there is a widely accepted explanation about why the ring didn't turn Sauron invisible. However, there are also some misconceptions and other theories regarding this, so first we're going to discuss these and break them down. We know that the ring amplified its users' skills and abilities according to their initial powers and their needs. For example, when Sam needed to sneak around Tritungol, his sense of hearing was enhanced to be able to hear the orcs better. And we're told that in the hands of a great warrior or mighty being, their power could be augmented so much that it could even rival or defeat Sauron when using the ring. This is why one of Sauron's fears was if a being such as Aragorn, Gandalf or Galadriel chose to take the ring and use it to challenge him. From these points, some argue that the ring's invisibility only applied to the hobbits, and since they lacked natural might or power, the ring instead turned them invisible, as stealth was more important to them. Both during Frodo's and Bilbo's quest, remaining undetected and unseen was essential to them. However, we know that this wasn't exclusive to hobbits, as a Sildor turns invisible when he wears the ring to escape an orc ambush. Now this power of invisibility wasn't exclusive to the One Ring, and we also know that it wasn't situational. All the lesser rings of power, apart from the three elven rings, also turned their user invisible, which is why the Nazgul had no physical body that could be seen. Now there's more to this invisibility than what we've discussed, though it will form a big part of my last point, and so we'll only discuss it later to avoid repetition. However, from this keep in mind that we can conclude that it wasn't Sauron's strength that prevented him from turning invisible, as other powerful beings such as the Nazgul also turned invisible after using their rings of power. Another common argument is that since Sauron was the master and creator of the ring, he could control what powers it gave him and prevent it from turning him invisible. Being its creator, there is little doubt that he understood the ring and its powers more than anyone else. However, it does seem odd that he would choose to remain visible rather than exploit the invisibility it could have given him. It would have offered him an extra level of protection from foes, and it doesn't make sense that he would deactivate it. Apart from this, there isn't anything else to discourage or encourage this point, save for our final explanation, which we'll talk about now. So the last explanation has the most backing by quotes and our knowledge of the world of Arda, and so it is the one that's considered to be canon. The world of Arda consists of two realms or planes. There is the physical world and the spiritual world, also known as the unseen world or the rate world. Despite these two coexisting together, what existed in the spiritual world could not be seen in the physical one. Now the idea that the One Ring turned its wearer invisible is flawed as what it did in fact is shift part of their being into the spiritual world. This would cause the person to seemingly disappear from the physical realm. Now all the rings of power apart from the three elven rings would do this, and at first this is a temporary transition. However, with repeated use of the ring, the user would fade away permanently, as their being would end up existing in the spiritual world, regardless of whether they were wearing a ring of power. Gandalf says, if a mortal often uses the ring to make himself invisible, he fades. He becomes, in the end, invisible permanently. He also tells Frodo, you were in greatest peril while you wore the ring, for then you were half in the great world yourself. We know that the Nazgul's rings also turned them invisible, as we're told, they could walk, if they would, unseen by all eyes in the world beneath the sun. We also know that during the War of the Ring, the Nazgul didn't wear their rings, but instead they were in Sauron's possession. The first quote that tells us this is from the Letters of Tolkien, Letter 246, who still, through their nine rings, which he held, 
had primary control of their wills. The other quote is from The Unfinished Tales, which states, They were by far the most powerful of his servants, and the most suitable for such a mission, since they were entirely enslaved to their nine rings, which he now himself held. Despite not wearing their rings, the Nazgul had lost their physical form, as their being existed in the spiritual world from overuse of their rings. This is why when Frodo wore the ring at Weathertop, he saw their true faces and forms, as he too had entered the unseen world. Now Sauron was one of the Maiar, angelic-like beings in Middle-earth, and they primarily existed in the spiritual plane. Sauron's physical form was a sort of vessel that he occupied, which he could reform with time, which incidentally is why he could only be truly defeated once the ring, which held a significant portion of his spirit, is destroyed. Now since he already existed in the spiritual plane, the ring would not turn him invisible, as that power came from its trait of being able to transport a being from the physical world to the spiritual one. What I find interesting to speculate on is, would it have worked this way with beings such as Gandalf and Saruman? They too were Maiar spirits, so would they also be unable to turn invisible if they wore the ring? I would think so considering all we've mentioned, though I'm keen to hear what you guys think. Anyway guys, this wraps up the video and I hope you enjoyed it. This video was quite shorter compared to our regular ones, though I also think that it was much more complicated. So if you didn't understand something or have any questions, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you can, leave a like, cause it helps our channel greatly. And if you're new here, subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we can once again explore the wonderful world and lore of Middle-earth.